DeMar DeRozan's proving himself as an MVP favorite, as with the Bulls down two points in the last seconds over their last two consecutive games, the fearless Compton-born Debo has drained back-to-back stone-cold three-point game-winning daggers at the buzzer. While this gave me flashbacks of DeMar doing the same thing back in 2013 in Orlando for my Raptors, what DeRozan's doing in Chicago is by far the best he's ever been throughout his 13-year career. Here's how Double D and Chi-Town are shocking the world right now, and stay tuned to see how they're beating teams in utterly dramatic fashion. Before continuing, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll give you a follow back. Links in the description for both those platforms. It's the dying seconds. The Chicago Bulls, who are in the middle of a storybook campaign, face a two-point deficit to their adversaries on the road. They need a two to tie and a triple to win the game. So who are they turning to? Who other than an MVP candidate, DeMarvelous DeRozan? As a historically high amount of his shots have this season, DeMar's attempt finds its way through the netting directly as the buzzer sounds, Chicago wins. The mind-blowing part about those last few sentences are that they don't merely describe Saturday night's game in the nation's capital, in which DeRozan drained a dagger from the corner to stun the Wizards. They also reaccount the Bulls' outing against the Pacers, which he won the game at the horn as well. Larry Bird did it in consecutive games back in 1985, but against the Washington Wizards, DeMar is the first player in NBA history to hit a game-winning buzzer beater in back-to-back -back days. DeMar could have tried to force overtime by going for a layup on both of those days, but why mess around when you're as hot as he's been in the clutch? We'll get to his historically efficient numbers in the final period later on, after hitting a one-footed dagger from the top of the key over a reputable wing defender in Torrey Craig to stun Pacer fans, the soon-to-be five-time All-Star rang in the new year with an even more impressive winner. In the nation's capital, Debo caught it around the baseline on the left wing with his back facing Corey Kispert and proceeded to dribble once to turn himself around, pump fake to get Corey Kispert out of his shoes, and then let go of a heavily contested triple by another Wizards defender, this time Bradley Beal, making it with two Washington Wizard defenders smothering him on the same possession. DeMar spoke on a video call after Saturday's game, saying, Just to hit a buzzer beater in general is amazing, especially when you do it on the road. I don't know if I'm dreaming, if it's real right now. It's just an honor to be trusted in the fourth quarter. Whether things are going good or going bad, my teammates always lean on me to be that calm presence to bring us home. I always bring that calm presence as much as I can in the fourth quarter, letting guys understand as long as we got time, we got a chance. After Kyle Kuzma hit a go-ahead three on the previous possession, according to Kuz himself, DeMar said to him, hold my beer. Chicago's winning streak and a loss by the Brooklyn Nets had Chicago sitting alone with the best record in the Eastern Conference at 24 and 10. The Bulls have continued winning despite not being at full strength, but should be getting some reinforcements back next week. Lonzo Ball and Alfonso McKinney have cleared protocol and should be back on track to return on Monday's game against Orlando. Coach Billy Donovan should be back for the team's next game from protocol as well. Meanwhile, for the GOAT Alex Caruso, it was reported two days before Christmas that he'd be out for 7-10 to 10 days, so expect the Bald Mamba back next week as well. The Bulls' acting man in charge, Chris Fleming, said with a laugh, quote, I'm quite relieved I can give this back to coach. I was very fortunate enough to be able to experience this from the head coaching standpoint and see the guys from a little bit of a different side. I told them after I was thankful for the partnership and how hard they poured themselves into making a situation a good one. That's pretty much how their character has been all season. They've been resilient, they've handled other blows and different guys have been out, and they've just kept chugging." End quote. No matter who's in charge, DeRozan could care less as the man naturally lays every bit of effort out on the line, and he's naturally clutch as DeMars continued to be at his best in the fourth quarter. During the final period, he's averaging 8 points on 53% shooting and a blistering 54% from the three-point line. He would be the first player in NBA history to put up that kind of production in the final period. For a player whose game is based on manufacturing and draining mid-range shots, you couldn't have predicted that DeRozan would be the only player up to this point in the calendar NBA year with two game-winning three-point buzzer beaters. While DeRozan's only made 25 total threes all season, he is attempting 2.2 triples on average per game. Two of them have been game winners, 
and also DeMar is making a career high 37.3% of those shots from beyond the arc. And it's those deep range shots that add the ideal variety to his offensive resume. Personally, I've been astounded by DeMar DeRozan's development since he came in as a 19 year old kid drafted back in 2009 by my Toronto Raptors. Like Zach Levine, DeRozan's first four seasons saw him miss the playoffs, but even when DeMar made it with the Raptors eventually in 2014, he struggled to make the jump from star to superstar caliber for many years. He seemed to have figured it out in 21-22, because now when DeRozan's having an off night in Chicago, while he used to shy away after shooting poorly throughout a game, as he's gone through many more years of experience since his days losing in the second round to LeBron, Debo's learned that even when he's missing attempts, his team needs him to stay aggressive, so that's what he does. His partner in crime, Zach Levine, said, Thank God we have DeMar DeRozan on our team. Speaking of Levine in that game against Washington, he dropped a cool 35 points and 7 threes while shooting 11 for 22 from the field. The beast up front in Vooch had 22 and 12 on 9 for 15 shooting. In terms of the Bulls supporting cast, the young and talented shot creating guard Kobe White stepped up with a big time 20 points. Former dunk champ and a two-way versatile wing in Derrick Jones Jr. had 9 points and the fan favorite 21-year-old Ayo Dosumu had some more patented key defensive plays, posting a block and a steal. The Bulls' offense wasn't great in the first half, and Levine really carried them early. The Bulls trailed for most of the game, but the key was that they stuck around and never let the Wizards build up too large of a lead. They finally tied it with just over two minutes to play when Vucevic collected a missed free throw from DeRozan and converted an and-one opportunity of his own. After the Wizards scored on the next possession to take the lead, the Bulls regained the lead on a three-point field goal from Zach Levine. Then, Kobe White was called for a blocking foul on Bradley Beal, which was upheld upon review. Beal hit both free throws to give the Wizards a one-point lead again. On the next possession, DeMar DeRozan missed a mid-range shot that he normally always makes. Vucevic stunned Washington with an emphatic block from behind on the following play to prevent the Wiz from retaking the lead. After the Wiz came back to deny Levine a mini fast break on the other end by slapping it out of Zach's hands, DeRozan drew a foul on an inbounds play. The play was actually reviewed by Washington, but DeMar ended up hitting both free throws. Kuzma had been hot all night, but missed a long three-point field goal, which preserved the Bulls' 117-116 lead. The Bulls couldn't convert on the other end, giving the Wizards one more opportunity to reclaim the victory in this one. This time, Kuzma hit an even longer three-pointer to give them a 119-117 lead, but the excitement of that shot quickly faded away when DeRozan hit an even bigger dagger a few seconds later. Call it a New Year's hangover, a trap game, or whatever, but the Bulls made this game against the Wizards a lot harder than it needed to be. It's difficult to win when it takes until 420 left in quarter number three for somebody on your bench to score, but that's exactly what the Bulls did. Granted, they still have a lot of their key guys out, which doesn't help their bench production, but the Bulls still only got six points from their entire bench unit against Washington. Somehow, Chicago still got the W, but only had 30 points in the paint the whole game to the Wizards' 72, but I guess it was their 17 three-point field goals that got them over the hump. DeRozan's brilliance is largely responsible for Chicago's excellence in the clutch this season as the Bulls are now 11-6 in clutch situations, with DeRozan shooting nearly 55% from the field entering Saturday. They have the NBA's third-ranked clutch offense, trailing only the LA Clippers and Phoenix Suns, and if he continues to make jumpers at the rate he's made them this year, the Bulls are going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in the postseason. Of course, the playoffs are really far away, but for now, what DeRozan's doing in the regular season deserves its own form of respect. The Bulls took a major gamble on him this offseason, spending $85 million in a first-round pick to land a player many around the NBA considered to be in decline at age 32 years old. All DeRozan's done since then is make doubters look completely, utterly foolish. He may have made history over the past two days, but he's been carrying the Bulls for more than two months now. This is nothing more than the culmination of what DeRozan has given the Bulls all season. With the W over the Wizards, the Bulls have now won their seventh straight game, as they're one game ahead of both Brooklyn and Milwaukee for the first seed in the East. DeRozan, who's enjoying somewhat of a career resurgence this season, finished with 28 points on 10 for 22 from the field, 9 boards, and 5 dimes. 
His season average of 27 points and 9.6 made field goals is the most since the 2016-17 season when he had 27.3 and 9.7 in those categories. DeRozan also leads the NBA in points per game in the fourth quarter, tallying 241 points through 30 games so far. But what's the most dominant aspect of DeMar DeRozan's game? Best answer in the comments down below earns next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says, I definitely think the Raptors will overcome this obstacle. I can imagine that playing in Tampa last year instead of back home in the six was tough for the organization, the personnel, and their fans because of COVID. Pause to read the rest of that amazing take from Ona. Hope you all have a great one. DFlow signing off.